Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation, a crazy exponential equation. Why do I call it a crazy equation? Because the bases are different, we have 2 on one side and a fraction on the other side, 5 fourths, and the exponent is quadratic. Are you serious? Yes, and we're going to be able to solve this problem. And I've done a similar problem before, I don't know if you're going to be able to remember or find it, if you do, please share the link down below because I'm lazy. Sorry about that. Now let's see how we can solve a problem like this. First of all, I noticed that the bases are different and they are not relatable. What I mean by that is, for example, when you have a problem like two to the power x squared minus x equals eight, these bases are not the same, but they are relatable, which means one of them can be written in terms of the other, or both of them can be written in terms of the same base. Like, 8 can be written as 2 to the power 3. From here, you can just set the uh, exponents equal to each other, and boom, you'll get a solution. Or in some cases, we're going to have something like this. You know, we'll have different numbers, but they're both powers of the same number. Make sense? In this case, both of these numbers are powers of 2, so we get a solution. Or we can make it even fancier, like something like this maybe, and you can still find the solution. All right, okay, so we don't have that luxury here. Unfortunately, we have an entirely different scenario, which is what makes this equation very interesting. I don't know, and I can't remember where, where I saw this type of problem because I didn't come up with the whole idea, but I saw this in one of these Olympiads because I look at so many different documents on the internet, books, websites, forums, whatever. And, but this was a really, really good problem. I really like it. And I'll show you the trick once you know how the trick works. Hopefully, you can identify uh, the, you know, what you're going to do next. So, first of all, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. And, and I'm going to tell you why we do that. So, if you multiply 2 to the power x squared minus 4x plus 2 by 4, you get 5. At this point, let me go ahead and pause and say you might be questioning at this point, like, why don't we just ln both sides? Yes, we can do that. And I can show you actually real quick. If you ln both sides, you get rid of the exponent, right? I mean, you, you can bring it down. When you bring it down though, that's a quadratic term. So you multiply that by ln two and then set equal to ln five fourths. Now, how do you solve an equation like this? Good question. You can solve it using the quadratic formula. Because if you think about it, this is actually a quadratic equation. Now, there's a couple ways to go about it. I don't know which one you, you prefer. I'll probably divide by ln2 first because I want to make this a monic, you know, quadratic, if you know what that means. So we can kind of write it as x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus ln 5 fourths all over ln2. It's kind of like, that's kind of like a weird number. And that's actually going to make up our constant along with the two. But notice that we did get a quadratic equation. And guess what? A quadratic equ equation can be solved with the quadratic formula. Just like the cubic and the quartic and the quintic. Wait a minute. Quintic doesn't exist and you have to stop there. But yes, we have a cubic and quartic formula. But the quadratic is the easiest. So x equals negative b, 4, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 16 minus 4ac, a is 1, so we don't need to worry about it. But c is kind of complicated, isn't it? Something like this. Uh-oh. This is where the complications come in, and all of that is divided by 2a, which is 2. Awesome. You like that? Well, maybe it won't make sense if we kind of simplify this ln thing, right? ln 5 fourths from properties of logarithms can be written as ln 5 minus ln 4, and now you're going to divide it by ln2, and then you'll make a common denominator. Multiply by 4, subtract 16, subtract it from 16, and then try to take the square root. If you're still with me or here, uh, good luck, okay? But that's going to be a lot of work, but it can be done. There's definitely an easier way, but we're going to cover that within the second approach, okay? This is where this kind of leads, and now... Let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which is what I was planning initially. But then I kind of thought about, okay, is there an alternative way to do it? Absolutely. The longer way to do it is the usual stuff like ln both sides, 
you know, bring down the X, whatever, and then just go from there. It almost always works. So why not try it? So now let's go ahead and take it from here. We have the two to the power X squared minus four X plus two. Was it that? And then we multiply it by four and that equals five after cross multiplying, remember? Now, why is this significant? Why did I cross multiply? Why does this help? Okay, there's a really good reason. It's about the basis. This is two, this is four. You see, they're relatable. So we're gonna write the four as two to the second power. Awesome. And then we're gonna attach this and together, they're gonna combine nicely. You'll see in a little bit how. Well, they're both, this, they're both two, so we just need to add the exponents. That's how the rule works, right? a to the power x times a to the power y equals a to the power x plus y. Now, this gives us two to the power x squared minus four x plus two plus two plus four equals five. Don't stop here though, because you don't really improve on your quadratic unless you get to see this, and that is a perfect square. Isn't that perfect? We do have now a perfect square, and we can easily, easily simplify this. Couldn't we do this with this first method? Yeah, but I did not want to spoil the surprise. If I already gave it to you, I would be giving it away, and, you know, that wouldn't be good, right? Would it? I don't know. Anyway, so this is what we have. Now, here's a quick question. Can we square root both sides to get rid of the square here? No, because... This is not two to the power x minus two to the power two. It's not the same thing because this is two to the power two x minus four. Remember the superpower rule, it works differently. So what am I gonna do then? Well, easy. You just need to log which base, doesn't matter. I'm, I'll use a natural log, but trust me, it's gonna be a lot easier this time because of the perfect square. It just makes everything perfect. So ln this, and ln that. Obviously, this is the exponent for two, so we're gonna be able to move it. X minus two quantity squared times ln two equals ln five. Now, I can go ahead and isolate the perfect square. It's just perfect. Unbelievable, right? It's amazing. Now, here's what you need to do. Square root both sides. But when you do square root, something happens. When you square root this, you get the absolute value or the plus minus sign. So when you square root, do not forget to put a plus minus sign here. So you get x minus two equals plus minus the square root of ln five divided by ln two. And of course you're allowed to add two to both sides, which you should, then you get two plus minus the square root of ln five over ln two. By the way, I'd like you to compare this to what we had here. Notice that after making a common denominator, maybe we'll get something, you know, a little nicer, but this takes us directly to the result and brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI and bye-bye.